editing software can be expensive. With Adobe recently moving to subscription only and inching closer to cloud storage only, maybe, editing applications have been a hot topic. And really, I, it's always been a hot topic in my inbox. People ask if Photoshop is necessary or if there's something less expensive that they can use. So with the theme this month being Essential November, I thought I might discuss a few simple ways to edit your images, tools that provide just the essentials, or maybe a little bit more, for free. There are quite a few free pieces of software for photo editing. Certainly, there are too many for me to fit into one video, but I have suggested numerous things throughout the years, and today I'll talk about a few of the free methods for editing your photos. I'll discuss the benefits and drawbacks of your camera brand's free editing software, editing capability built right into your camera, and apps for your devices, like your phone or tablet, which are free and still quite capable. So first, the free download from your camera brand. Nikon and Canon each have their own software that you can download from their websites. Nikon's is Capture NXD, Canon's is Digital Photo Professional 4. If you have a Sony camera, you can download Capture One Pro 10 for Sony for free. I've used both Nikon's and Canon's software, and I can show you a little bit from both of those now. Both pieces of software can do your basic editing tasks, but I'll show you a bit here in Canon Digital Photo Professional 4. You can adjust exposure and curves, colors, and you can even apply lens distortion corrections and noise reduction. For me, the biggest benefit to these applications is that they speak the same language as your camera. For example, on my recent trip to Bryce Canyon, I used Nikon cameras and edited the images almost exclusively in Capture NXD. Take a look. My very favorite part of using this was that the picture control, which is called picture style for you Canon users, was retained when I opened the raw images in Capture. When I use Lightroom or Photoshop, that isn't the case. Those adjustments do not appear. So in Capture NXD, I not only see those adjustments, I'm also able to change the picture control. The same goes with white balance. Basically, I'm able to retain the look and feel of my images as I see them on my camera's LCD screen. And I'm able to make photos across my different cameras look similar. I can even modify how delighting is applied. Those changes speed up my workflow because I can make leaps to getting the photos looking similar across cameras and close to what I want, but then I can fine tune from there to get the final result I'm looking for. One other benefit of these is that they tend to be better up to date on new cameras than many of the other pieces of software. There's nothing worse than getting a new camera and then not being able to edit your images. Now those things being said, I have to mention the drawbacks. With the case of Nikon and Canon, the two brand specific pieces of software I've used, these applications are not the speediest, nor the very easiest to use. It took me some time to get used to both of them and kind of where everything is in the software. They aren't as intuitive as some of the other things I've used. And also there's no selective editing in either of them. And like I said, in my experience, they are slow. Not necessarily in like the editing area, but in the importing and exporting of images. Sometimes though, I just, I overlook the waiting because I do find a lot of value in the time that I save in the other areas that I mentioned earlier. So on to the next option, in-camera editing. A great many cameras have some editing options built right in. My Canon Rebel SL2 has filters I can apply or I can crop or resize images. My Nikon DSLRs have much more flexibility. I have a whole slew of things that I can do like adjust contrast and saturation. Now you are editing on a relatively small LCD screen. And again, there's no selective editing, but you can edit raw images. You can resize raw or JPEG files. I like this because I can edit and save a small copy of it on the memory card and then transfer it to my phone and get something posted on social media for you all right from the field. And last, apps. There are a ton of free editing apps for your devices. My personal favorite is Snapseed. It is quite flexible with general editing, filters that you can adjust, and even some selective editing. It even edits raw images right on your phone or tablet. 
In fact, this image is a raw image from my Nikon D810. I've used this app a ton when I'm out in the field or just out on the town. I also like how you can go through the history of edits and roll them back. It's also really easy to use. It does have its drawbacks though, like you are using a screen which is probably smaller than your computer screen, or you might find it difficult to use your fingers to do the editing, though I suppose you could use a stylus. And you do have to have enough space on your device for the photos you want to edit. And if you're talking raw images, it's going to be a lot of space. Okay, friends, what do you think? These may not be the most popular ways to edit, but they have all become a part of my workflow. I have different ways to edit my photos, just like I have different cameras and different lenses for different types of jobs. And I particularly like that I have been able to use all of the methods that I mentioned today for zero dollars. <laughs> There's certainly a place for more extensive tools, but I think these options are a great way to try out editing before purchasing software. You can zone in on what it is that you actually want in a piece of editing software, what it is that you actually use, whether that be you know, the ultimate in something like Photoshop or just sticking with the basics like the things that I mentioned today. Lots of folks have asked me to start making videos on post-processing, so I think this is where I will start. I am working on separate videos for each of the methods that I mentioned today. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel and click that bell to receive notifications of when I post new videos. But in the meantime, share your experience with the rest of us. Have you used any of these free things that I talked about today? Or are you a Photoshop power user or something else? Let us know in the comments below.